another unboxing video. Today's one is for Tonic's Coral Skies colour trend, which I think is their third and final one for 2022. But it consists of beautiful coral tones and navy blues as well. And you might have already seen a sneak peek of this if you're getting uh, Tonic Craft Kit number 61. I'm not sure if you'll actually have your kit by now, um, but if not, you'll be getting a, a few of the goodies in your craft kit. And check out my unboxing video of that if you want to see what is included in there. Um, but with this beautiful colour trend, there's so many bits and pieces to show you. We've got embossing powders, ribbons, embellishment mousses, um, sequins, confettis, all sorts of different Nouveau drops, the sparkle spray, glacier paste, and a brand new shimmer powder as well. Um, and I have already filmed two tutorial style videos. I, I've only recently just put up my first tutorial style video as I'm filming this one. Um, and the response has been a, like a resounding yes please do more of these so there is going to be one for the um, craft perfect kind of elements from the colour trend which I totally forgot to put the ribbon in there um, but it's mainly using the washi tape, the papers and the cardstock giving you a tutorial of how you might want to use those items and then there's also a tutorial, a separate video, showing you how to use a couple of, no, three of the new Nouveau drops plus the confetti um, to create a cool scribbly Nouveau kind of background. Um, and I will show you those cards later on in this video as well. But I'm going to revert back to my older um, unboxing of a colour trend video where I show you the whole colour trend first with little swatches and then I'll go through all the cards that I've got because I've literally got 20 or more to show you plus some extra backgrounds as well so I think it's easier for me to just run through the whole colour trend then show you some of the bits and pieces that I've done with it rather than trying to pick out exactly what products I've used and remember which ones they're supposed to go with and stuff so um, let's get on with the unboxing first of all I want to go through the washi so I've put a strip of each of the washies out here so you can see exactly what they look like. Um, on some of the cards later you'll be able to see how transparent or opaque the washies are. This one is slightly more opaque because it's the solid blue but these two you can actually still see through them which is really nice. You can sort of layer them on top of a patterned paper, use them to create a whole background or whatever you want to really. And this is how the washi tapes come. They're in a packet that is called Coral Sky so if you're just after the washi tape you know what to look for. Um, and they have the three rolls on here and all of their packaging for washi tapes is actually split in this central section so you can take the rolls off the packaging without destroying the packaging as well you're supposed to be able to open it there I'm not sure if um, it might actually come with a sticker on here and you can peel the sticker off and then easily be able to take your washi tape rolls out of there but if you want to keep them in their original packaging you can still take them off and put them back on again uh, depending how you like to use your washi tapes whether you mind them being stuck on the packaging or whether you want to take them off as you're using them but those are the three washi tapes I don't think they have specific names for them um, but you've basically just got like um, a Czech or gingham kind of navy blue solid navy blue and then the sort of lighter and darker coral stripes that go diagonally across the tape as well so beautiful washi tape um, I have done a few ideas with that as well so later on there'll be a few samples just a couple of background ideas and then other ways of incorporating the washi tape into your uh, cards with your die cutting and stuff as well then we have got the two rolls of ribbon and I actually have them this time usually the ribbon is always what's held up with a colour trend but I actually have them to show you in this video today so the first one is one of their um, double satin ribbons and this one is called Moonstone Pink. You get five meters on the roll and it's nine millimeters in width. So um, just like all of their other double satin ribbons, they've got the most of the double satin ribbons. A lot of them match the colors of cardstock um, that are in the Craft Perfect range. But this is the new one, which is called Moonstone Pink. Um, and then we also have this one, which I don't think we've had a ribbon like this before unless it was just like a small piece that we got um, in a craft kit perhaps, maybe there has been something like that, but I don't think we've had a full roll of something like this before, and this is called the Navy Gingham Ribbon, and it is five meters again, but it's only five millimeters in width, but it still comes on the wider spool to make all of their packaging consistent. So this is what they look like close up. So you can see this has got that beautiful satin finish on it and it's called double satin I think because it is double sided satin but it also has both finished edges which is nice. And then this is the gingham ribbon. So you can see it's very school uniformy. Um, mine was My school uniform was red but it really does remind me of school uniforms along with the, um, the washi tape as well because there was a school near me that had the blue. 
it's really lovely that ribbon. Um, I haven't actually used any of the ribbon on projects, um, but they would be perfect for tying bows, using in any of your uh, three-dimensional box die sets that you might have from Tonic, you know, like lacing around the top and pulling it tightly, tying a bow to hold something together, or... Um, just using strips of them across a card looks fantastic in a similar way that I um, have shown in some samples later on how to use the washi tape you could use your ribbon in those similar kind of ways as well and then um, on this little swatch sheet we've also got the three brand new ink pads as well and these are the Nouveau diamond ink pads which are hybrid ink pads so that you can use them with your water colouring and also with your alcohol colouring as well so pretty much if you stamp with one of these you can do whatever you want to with it afterwards you don't have to think ahead um, and decide if you want to do your water coloring or your alcohol coloring the dark blue is a really lovely color for outlines if you want something different to black as well um, or gray the dark blue is a lovely alternative to that and then we've got these beautiful um, lighter corally kind of colors that are perfect for building up patterns or just adding some extra interest to your backgrounds so this is the coral sky set of inks the lightest one is called pink sands the middle colored coral is called sweet melon and the dark blue is called indigo shade so we've got the beautiful little ink pads these fit perfectly in the tim holtz mini distress ink tins if you want to store them in those as well and um the bottom of a Nouveau pad, I had somebody ask this years ago, I think I did explain it um, in another video, but the bottom of a Nouveau pad, it's not as recessed as a mini distress ink pad, so you can put your sponges underneath, but they will be raised up a little bit, so a sponge will actually protrude a bit out of the bottom, whereas with a mini distress ink pad, they kind of like get completely hidden in the bottom of the ink pad, and um, they will still poke out a little bit, but it does still work keeping your sponges underneath these pads they just sort of won't stay in when you lift the pad out of your uh, box but you can definitely still keep the pads underneath them just in case you wanted to know that so that is the mini ink pads and I'll show you the little colour swatch up close so you can see how beautifully um, solid they sort of come out and dry nice and um, evenly as well so you've got those three colours in there then moving on we have got the embossing powders so we've got two new embossing powders uh, this is called blue depths and also the coral chic as well um, i have shown a little bit of the coral chic in the craft kit video because we did have a little tester pot of that and um i showed it in this capacity here where I had actually stamped it uh, with some bubble wrap. I'd stamped some bubble wrap with the clear mark ink. And in some areas it looks very matte, but in some areas it also does give that shiny kind of effect as well. Um, so it's kind of... I don't know if, if, if maybe I overheated it more, or maybe it's where more powder has stuck, um, to whether it gives that slightly more matte or slightly more glossy kind of finish, but it's a really beautiful colour, and I do think that this powder has got like some white base to it, to make it more of an opaque colour, and I'll show you that in some of the samples later on, uh, because I've played around with this quite a bit, like putting a couple layers on, or um, using the two together and putting one over the top of the other and stuff, so I will show you more examples of these embossing powders later on as well but to give you a little colour swatch of them this is the blue depth one and it's, it is a bit more of a translucent kind of colour when you put it over the top of other things and it does have a gorgeous pearlescent sheen to it as well and then we have the coral chic which is a, a gloss kind of finish but it does seem to be if you have less powder or maybe if you slightly overheat it a little bit it gives more of like a, a satin matte sort of finish as well so you can kind of vary the finish on that coral chic one too so those are the two embossing powders then we have the three new additions to the Pure Sheen range. So we have got Confetti, which is called Rose Starburst, which are tiny little coral stars. They're really pretty, those. We've got Midnight Sapphire, which is the new glitter. Really beautiful blue that goes perfectly with all the colours in this colour trend. And then we have new sequins in three different sizes that are called Astral Nights. And they've got um, a really beautiful, almost like purple tint to them as well. They are a navy blue colour, but when the light hits them, it goes from a couple of different blues e even into a really dark, deep blue kind of purple colour as well. So really pretty colours. 
and here's a little swatch of them. So you can um, apply them in more of like a thick fashion, um, the confetti. You can apply it more like uh, large chunks of glitter or you can just apply them individually using your Nouveau embellishment tool. Um, then with the glitter, I've just done a little sort of experiment or a little sample of a full-on sort of swatch and little um, squiggles as well. So you could use this to accent your patterned papers, you could die cut something, uh, put some little dots to go along with a pattern, maybe instead of Nouveau drops, little dots of glue and some glitter sprinkled on top would look fantastic. And then we've also got the sequins as well. So this is more sort of chucking them onto a blob of glue like they're glitter and then you can also place them individually as well and I have done a card uh, showing my technique that I, I've done quite a few times. I'm pretty sure I did it in a... I feel like I did it in a talking video but I'm not sure what kind of video that would have been. Um, but I've definitely done it in sped up videos as well where you kind of like cover an area with glue and then you put all of the sequins on there and because we have a matching colour of glitter um, it works really nicely with this colour trend to do that sort of technique as well. So those are all of the Pure Sheen additions to the colour trend or to the whole Nouveau range. That's those. Then on our next little colour swatch we have got the two brand new mousse colours. So these are both normal embellishment mousses. So they're the kind of mousse you use for a stencil, you use to accent some embossed cardstock or um, the cotton handmade papers from Tonic. You can also water them down and paint with them, make cool like stripy backgrounds painting with them. You can splat with them, you can use them in the Nouveau squishy sort of background technique that I like to do as well. Loads of different ways of using your Nouveau embellishment mousses. And these are the colours. So we have Bermuda Pink and High Tide Blue. Now Bermuda Pink is a really gorgeous corally pinky colour um, and all of the embellishment mousses are a gorgeous pearlescent finish. And then the High Tide Blue, I deliberately put that little fleck of green in the middle because as I was using it there are some tiny little flecks of green lurking around in there. I don't know if you can see any in the pot. I can see one just there actually. If you see on that little peak there, there's a little green dot in there. There's kind of little bits of green lurking in there. I don't know if that's maybe um, it should have been mixed in a little bit more or not, but I quite like those little hints of green. I think it looks really nice. Um, and it's a, quite a nice little surprise actually when you're using it and you spread it across and you've got tiny little flecks of green in there as well. So um, yeah, really, really pretty. But if you didn't want the green, you could just mix it back into the blue and it would give a slightly greeny tinge to your blue. Um, but really pretty colours of the Nouveau Mousse. Then we have four new Nouveau drops. We have got the Jewel drop, which is called Watermelon Wonder. We've got a new Glitter drop, which is called Velvet Evening. We've got a new Gloss drop, which is called Seashell Pink. And we've got a brand new Dream drop, which is called Fruit Cocktail as well. So we've got four different finishes of different drops in different colours. These three are the ones that I use in my tutorial video for doing a Nouveau style background, and they work really nicely with each other but you do also have um, a blue option as well if you're going more for the blues in this collection um, you have the blue option too. Please ignore the white bits on top of my Nouveau drops they obviously weren't quite dry when I put another piece of card on top of them so they've all sort of uh, picked up a bit from the back of the other piece but this is the beautiful watermelon wonder colour you can see if you spread it out it's um, a lighter pink tone but if you leave it in drops it kind of intensifies that beautiful pink colour you've also got the seashell pink which is a gloss drop and it gives a gorgeous glossy effect really lovely pretty um, almost the same colour actually spread out or um, in drops it's quite an opaque kind of colour but gives that beautiful gloss finish the glitter drop which is the velvet evening you can see there's actually multiple tones of blue glitter in there i think maybe just the two possibly three tones of blue glitter and you can see if you spread it out you can see that glitter with the particles more whereas if you have it in a dome the dome kind of encases all of the glitter and it looks more like um a jelly tot or something so really, really pretty, the, the glitter drops. And then we also have Fruit Cocktail, which is the Dream Drop. And you can see, I, I like to spread them out as well, so you can kind of see how sheer the colour is. But also with a Dream Drop, you can really see the uh, mica that's in there as well. So really pretty colour, this one. It is more on the 
orange coral kind of side compared to some of the other pinky coral colours in this trend but it goes really nicely with everything and it goes fantastically well with the brand new shimmer powder which I'll be showing in a second as well it's that's got like hints of orange in um, and this works really nicely with that as well it brings those colours in together so those are the four new drops then three more products we have a brand new uh, sparkle spray and this one is called pearled blush um, it looks a little bit more orange in the bottle actually than when you actually have it on your cardstock this is just me taking the uptake tube out of the bottle and spreading it over and then also splattering a bit of it as well um, I really like to water down my sparkle sprays they're so intense with colour and sparkle that you really can get away with watering them down to make them go a bit further if you're worried that uh, you know maybe you in comparison to a mica mist these are quite small bottles but if you have some other spare bottles in your stash you can definitely dilute this down with some distilled water um, and it really will go a lot further but there is a lot in this bottle anyway you know the tiny little ones that we get in a tonic craft kit I rinsed one of them out once and I sprayed how many sprays there were um, just with water on it and I think it was 30 actually, big sprays in that tiny little bottle. So this one, I'd say there's probably like 200 sprays in that or more. So the size of the bottle can be deceptive sometimes. But if you do want to make it go further, you really can get away with diluting this one because it is such a um, highly pigmented and very sparkly packed kind of product. So you can definitely water this down. Or you can actually, if you don't want to go to the hassle of diluting into another bottle, you can just spray your project with water first and then spray uh, with less of this than you would normally use because the water will help it kind of disperse out as well. So gorgeous sparkle spray. You can do so much with your sparkle sprays. They're almost the same kind of um, ink as the Nouveau glitter markers. So you can do all all sorts of different techniques with them obviously spray with them you can splatter with them you can water them down and paint with them you can just dip a paintbrush into this and paint with them straight away neat as well and um, you can stamp with them you can use them in shaving foam and do all sorts of cool backgrounds like that you could use them on your jelly plate if you wanted to you could use them in the nouveau squish backgrounds as well there's so many ways of using your sparkle sprays then we have Galaxy Blue Glacier Paste. So the previous blues we have had in um, the Glacier Paste have been slightly more on the dull side or a lot paler in colour. But this is a gorgeous, almost like um, a true blue kind of colour. You know, it's sort of that perfect blue. If you were doing something that was red, white and blue, this would be the perfect kind of blue to use for that. Um, and it's a gorgeous colour, the Galaxy Blue. I can just prize this open to show you in the pot but I've also got a little sample there as well and you can see it's actually got on the camera it's really picking up like a hint of green in the uh, mica that's in there as well so um, I love it when products kind of shift to be a different colour too it kind of gives you a nice surprise when you're using them but you can see how beautiful that looks when it's out of the pot and used on a surface as well Glacier Paste again is another really versatile Nouveau product because you can use it in so many different ways again you can use a palette knife to apply it through a stencil you can pounce it through a stencil with a sponge you can splat with it you can paint with it you can do it in the squishy backgrounds you can stamp with it as well um, all sorts of different techniques that you can do with the glacier paste too uh, I might be a little bit more reluctant to use it on my jelly plate just because if you've ever worked with glacier paste before and you've got it on your glass mat it's one of those kind of products where because it's got more larger particles of mica they sent they tend to lay flat to the surface and I think it would take you quite a few pulls to get that off of your jelly plate but if you don't mind uh, grungy kind of styles or mixing of products between your project um, I'm sure it would work fine on your jelly plate as well I'm just uh, thinking if you're more of a, a couple time use person of your jelly plate and then you want it to be clean again it might be a little bit tricky to clean this off you might have to go through multiple pulls of prints to get it off of the plate as well um, similar to if you um, put your gilding flakes on your jelly plate which works really nicely as well uh, but anyway um, 
The final product in this colour trend is probably what a lot of people have been waiting for. It's a brand new Nouveau Shimmer Powder and this is the Fantail Firecracker and it has got some beautiful colours in there. If you mix it all together it does go into a beautiful coral tone but if you like to use it in the sprinkled fashion with a little bit of water on it you've got bright magentas in there, you've got really bright yellows, you've got orange um, and then you've got sort of like red tones with this sort of corally pink mica in there so it's a really beautiful mix this one but if you do just want the straight coral colour you can just mix it up and you get that coral tone so if you were going to watercolour with it you'd get the coral tone but if you're going to do more of um, a sprinkled background you know where you either tap this onto dry card or wet card and then spray it with water or manipulate it with a brush or something you're going to get more of this sort of variation with the different colours in there so um, I'm going to move all of this out of the way and then I'll come back to show you the Craft Perfect from this collection. So Craft Perfect wise for this colour trend we have got the double sided patterned paper pad which has got um, eight designs, six of each of them, and it's 160 GSM, and it's six by six uh, in size. The first sheet is navy blue with this random dotty kind of pattern that repeats all over it in the coral kind of colour. And on the back of that piece, we've got this beautiful coral colour with some navy blue seagulls, which went perfectly with the Tonic Craft Kit um, 61, which was a message in a bottle. But if you had the um, Ahoy... Why can I never remember what it was called? It's either called Ahoy Matey or Ahoy Sailor. Um, the extra kind of showcasey type set that I think it must have been Cyber Week last year that it came out actually. Um, but anyway, if you had that one in your stash or any other nautical kind of themed dyes or stamps, uh, this would work really nicely with that. Perhaps you got the mermaids from one of the stamp clubs as well. It would go nicely with that too. So we've got beautiful seagull repeating pattern on that one. Then the next sheet is navy blue again in the background but we've got stripes of a lighter blue colour in um, little long dashes and dots between them. So a lovely sort of different take on a stripy patterned paper. You could also use this perhaps if you're really good at your calligraphy writing. Um, you could use this as kind of guidelines for doing calligraphy writing um, as like a focal sentiment on a card. Maybe you've got one of the brush tip embossing pens. You could do some cool calligraphy and then heat and it uh, with one of the new embossing powders onto this kind of patterned paper it would look really cool and then on the back of this one this is my favorite pattern paper and um, it's kind of like a retro fern kind of look with these gorgeous leaves going up and down paper and you've got it in all of the different tones that are in the color trend as well so it's a really light coral background then you've got a couple of different tones of coral and blues on the actual leaves themselves then the next sheet of paper is this um, heart design. So it's navy blue in the background again with the coral hearts on it. But the hearts are actually a tiny bit askew. They're not completely straight up and down. Um, and you've kind of got a diagonal appearing in there as well. So a really gorgeous paper. And actually quite a nice one for just adding a little strip to your project. Instead of having to add um, maybe like a, a straight strip of hearts you could actually pick out a diagonal strip of hearts and add them diagonally across your card as well um, so it's a lovely different kind of way of using it I showed that kind of idea in my um, Christmas magic colour trend video where we had the gold foiled hearts onto the black craft card and I picked out little pieces um, with just a row of hearts on it you could do that but in a diagonal for this piece of paper and then on the back of this one you've got the really light coral colour with the dark coral and the navy blue as a polka dot pattern um, and a nice sort of regimented kind of polka dot pattern there as well so a lovely pattern to paper for all sorts of different kind of projects then we have a gorgeous stripy patterned paper which in my kit unboxing video I said looks very deck cherry but actually it could also be a different variation on colour of a candy cane as well. It could give a sort of candy cane sort of feel too. So um, it could be an alternative Christmas colour scheme for you as well. And this has got the really light coral background and then you've got the darker coral wide stripes and then a couple of uh, stripes getting thinner with the sort of medium blue colour and the navy blue colour as well. 
and on the back of that one we've got navy blue background with a very sort of grid pattern of these kind of um, ears of corn or little tiny leaf motifs or they could be feathers or something as well in the lighter blue on top of there too. So we've got all of those different patterned papers in this pad. They will really last you a long time. I've I mean, Actually it's, this is a pretty good pad for holding together as well because I've pinched quite a few sheets out of this and it's actually still holding together even though I've removed quite a few sheets so um, it's a lovely kind of pad um, these 6x6 ones are really nice to actually just have on your desk or close by for those occasions where you just sort of think your card needs something but you're not quite sure what it needs I have all of my other pads um, you know close sort of behind me within arm's reach so that if I need something for a project I can flick through and sometimes I can sort of remember oh yeah that was probably in the spring meadow colour trend that kind of colour or the coral skies colour trend you know you can kind of sort of uh, scroll back in your mind and remember kind of what colours were in a colour trend and you know try and pick out that colour pad to go with things so that is the patent paper pad and then the five new card stocks that are in this colour trend which you will have seen in the craft kit unboxing video and if you've already watched the tutorial video that I've done on the craft perfect you will have also seen all of these colours as well because I did a quick introduction in that video too but we've got the new textured card stock which is called pier blue I, I was editing my um kit unboxing video and I realised when I say peer it kind of sounds like I'm saying P-E-E-R but it's peer as in like a uh, seaside peer like Brighton peer P-I-E-R uh, just in case that wasn't clear um, but I thought just because I'd sort of thought that in my um, unboxing video as I was editing it I thought I'd just say it um, so it's peer blue as in P-I-E-R so it's a lovely nautical blue kind of colour um, and then we also have this gorgeous luxury one which I was really trying to show off in my unboxing video but it's really hard to capture on camera it's like really uh, I would I would describe it as um, dry brushed painting you say you've got like a wall or something that you've kind of dry brushed in a different colour or um, you've been using acrylic paint and it's running out on your brush and you get that dried brush kind of look. It looks like that to me I think. But it is, it's really unusual pattern actually. I don't think I've ever seen another cardstock with that kind of pattern on because some of it is brushy and some of it is like little dotty patchy bits. But it is very difficult to come across on camera so I think you're going to really appreciate that one in person if you get hold of it. And that is called Flanders Blue. Then we have the double-sided pearlescent cardstock, the gorgeous pearlescent cardstock that Tonic do. This is called Coral Luster. Then we have a new mirror card which I'll just peek out the side. It's a beautiful coral colour which is called Italian Rose and then finally we have um, a brand new glitter card which again is on that slightly more orangey side so works really nicely with the shimmer powder and the dream drop as well they're on the same sort of orange coral side and this one is called sugared coral um, and it's got sort of like an AB finish in there as well as the corally colours and a, an orangey yellowy sort of colour in there too so really pretty colours of cardstock so now I'll put this away and I'll come back with the tons of samples that I've got to show you as well. So as you can see I have got a ton of samples to show you. Lots of them are quick and easy cards that I was just sort of putting together with bits and pieces from my stash that I wanted to play with and I hadn't played with before um, and some of them are just backgrounds, the last few are just backgrounds I didn't have enough time to finish them. Um, but the first five of them are left over from my unboxing video of the Tonic Craft Kit that had this colour trend in which was kit number 61. I know the Mica Mist that was in that kit and some of the other items were um, exclusive or already um, released so I'm just sort of showing you how you can accent a card with some of these beautiful new card stocks so this is the gorgeous Italian rose and the coral luster in there so you can just sort of accent a card with that there's also some of the patterned paper behind there as well this one is a use for the patterned paper as well using it as a complete background and then using some of the uh, speciality kind of papers in the foreground to create this kind of film strip sort of look if you didn't get kit number 61 I'm sure you've got tons of dyes in your stash that could do something similar to this if you wanted to kind of use this idea um, cause I'm kind of thinking maybe there are some of you that love the colour trends but don't necessarily follow what's in the tonic craft kits so this might be another idea of how you might want to use some of these items whether you have these dies or not um, but that is another kind of idea of it I don't know if you can 
it doesn't really show it any better does it that texture that's on there I think this part is one of the more dottier parts of it rather than the stroke parts of it like the brush stroke parts um but it's really gorgeous that Flanders blue so that is that one this is showing how um a, like a different way of how you could use your washi tape on your cards and you can see here um the transparency of the washi tapes as well or well, I think all washi tapes are supposed to have some kind of transparency to them I think it's part of like what a washi tape actually is um, so I, this card is a nice one to show off that transparency to you to get it across um, on camera um, and it's also a nice way of just adding a little bit of washi tape to your card as well literally little strips of it um, bringing in some of the patterned paper to add extra pattern to it as well rather than using the solid washi tape I've used a little bit of patterned paper to layer into it so just another idea of how you might want to use your washi tapes then this is showing off a lot of the cardstock again um, so using like the glitter card just as a tiny little accent behind these little starfish and also this kind of style of card is really nice to use with your colour trend if you're sort of um Maybe you've just started playing with your colour trend and you're not quite sure how the colours sort of go together but you want to try and use the whole colour trend on a card. Just um, using minimal amounts of what you have and cutting off a strip of each colour of cardstock, cutting it into squares and using some dies from your stash to kind of turn it into a card. I think it's a nice way to ease yourself in to um, using a colour trend and then maybe the next time you make something you'll bring in a little bit of the Nouveau items and um, you know try with a little bit more white space or cover everything in Nouveau or bringing out a stencil that you have or something I think this is like a nice starting point to get into a colour trend just getting used to those colours together and seeing how they sort of work together and mix and match and everything so I thought I'd keep this card in to show you that and then this is a similar kind of idea as well um, using lots of the craft perfect colours on here too and just another idea of if you've gone too heavy with your colours and you feel like um, there's not enough white space left in there you've mounted it onto a white card blank but there's not much white elsewhere in it because you've used a lot of the colours of cardstock just coming back in with your white gel pen just to add some faux stitching or some little doodles onto it really helps sort of lighten the design back up and bring the white back into the card as well so I thought that was a nice one to keep in there to show you then the next two cards are the two that I make in my tutorial videos so if you love the look of this card and there's a, a rogue sequin on there if you love the look of this card in my um, tutorial video for the craft perfect portion um, of the colour trend I show you exactly how I make this and I wasn't sure if this was too simple of a card to show you but I feel like it might be helpful to somebody to sort of uh, hear my thought process of how I'm placing bits and pieces to get a background like this because although it is literally just sticking scraps of cardstock down and pattern papers um, sometimes it's difficult to kind of figure out how you balance things across a card or how do you overcome a piece not being the right sort of shape or something you know I, I just basically just verbalize exactly what I think in my brain when I'm making a card like this so hopefully that tutorial video will be helpful to somebody and then I've also done a tutorial video on this one so my first tutorial video was on a nouveau squish background um, the second one brings nouveau drops with acrylic paint and then this um, sort of version of a nouveau tutorial background is actually making squiggly patterns just using your drops straight from the bottle I did just use them straight from the bottle here but if you wanted to you could definitely get those um, new fine precision tip nozzles that uh, Nouveau do now as well and put them onto your bottles as well and get an even finer sort of squiggly pattern too and sprinkle in some confetti so if you want in-depth tutorials on either of these cards there's a separate video for each one of them as well so I thought I'd show you those so you know what to look out for in those videos now these three here are extra little scraps that I just decided to see how well this cardstock embossed and then I also wanted to use some Nouveau over the top to show how you can kind of accent it so if you love um, really clean and simple cards or really minimalistic and literally all you need to do is add a sentiment on there to kind of finish it off you could do any of these in a full panel um, and then literally just cut out like 
like a white sentiment and stick it over the top and it would look fantastic. So this is the pearlescent card, which is the Coral Luster, uh, which actually just looks like this on the debossed side. But on this side, I brought in some of the mousse. So this is the coral coloured mousse that I've put over the top. And it kind of... Uh, is a lighter pearlescent finish to the cardstock so it almost gives that kind of whitewash kind of finish but it's pearlescent on pearlescent so you're not losing any of the pearlescence by like using gesso or something you've actually still got that gorgeous pearlescent kind of finish on there so I really liked how that one turned out I think it gives some nice depth to a 3D embossing folder like this as well this is a Lisa Horton one I will try and link to any of the other random products that I've used um below the video as well and there will be affiliate links too to all of the um, colour trend items too and if you can't find what you're looking for in the description um, it only lets me put a certain amount of characters down there but there will be a complete full list with pictures on my blog post as well and that's always linked in the description too so if you are looking for something in particular um, my blog post is probably the best place to go because you can see everything with pictures um, but anyway that is the Nouveau Mousse on top of the pearlescent cardstock then this one is the mirror cardstock which is the Italian rose and I had initially put the mousse on there I think you can probably kind of see those lighter areas is the mousse and then I thought I wonder what the dream drop would look like over the top so I did also spread just with my finger the dream drop all the way over the top and I I don't know if you can 100% see the effect on on the camera but I do quite like um, that stripey streaky kind of look that it's given it um, it's kind of like aged it a little bit and if you wanted to go even further with this you could probably even sand a little bit of it off do I have my little um, emery board thing here I do usually have oh there it is um, I wonder if we could sand a little bit of that off and see what it looks like as well I might ruin it but it could give another different kind of look. I'm not sure if that sandpaper is um, a rough enough grade to, uh, to take it off, but I think you've kind of got a little bit of a uh, the white of the cardstock showing to kind of age it a little bit more or if you wanted to go um, make it even look even more like metal you could try and bring in some alcohol inks or something on it as well or even just your um, alcohol pens too so that was using the mousse and the dream drop onto the mirror card and then this one I think is my favourite of all of them this is another Lisa Horton embossing folder this is the Flanders Blue cardstock with some of that beautiful um, glacier paste over the top and you cannot tell from the top here but a couple of those stars had cracks in them and because this is a luxury cardstock it's white on the other side so the white was showing through but because we have that navy blue glacier paste that works perfectly with um, this colour of cardstock it's hidden them so I don't think you can actually even tell on the back of it I don't think you can actually I think it was only just like the very top layer of some of the areas um, of the like the top finish of the cardstock that cracked through but the glacier paste completely camouflages it and you cannot tell at all so if that ever kind of happens to you take a corresponding colour of um, glacier paste to the colour of cardstock that you'll be using and see if that helps you kind of disguise that cracked effect because um, I was really impressed with that and I really like the look of that I have a feeling uh, my siblings Christmas card might feature something like that on it because they love um, blues and silvers and stuff so I really like how that one turned out then, um, these are probably going to jump all over the place between the different products, but I'm hoping it will give some of you um, a little bit of inspiration of how you might want to use some of these things. So, this was both of the embossing powders. Now, I actually bought... Oh, it's up there. I'll go get it. So, I bought this. It's the Wow Mixed Media Embossing Brush, and it's basically just like a little paintbrush in kind of like a re for a sticky embossing pad. So you can actually just brush straight onto your cardstock with this to get a really um, rough sort of uh, brush stroke kind of pattern really. So you could do this with your little mini um, Nouveau Clear Mark pad which is what I often do but I'd, uh, I'd bought this a while ago and I just found it in my stash. 
so I thought I would use it. So I've done random brush strokes and I've put the coral coloured powder on the bottom and then once I had heat set that I came back in and did random brush strokes over the top. Um, actually, I don't think I did do that. I think the blue, I think I did that with the pad because that looks like the exact shape of the pad. So I think I used the brush. I did these a while ago, that's why I can't 100% remember. But I did the brush for the coral and then I did the pad over the top of the coral once I'd heat set it and did the blue and then when I was heating the blue I kept applying more heat to the areas and this white started to pop up that's why I think the coral one has like some kind of white in the core of the colour of the powder because this white just started popping up in there and then I thought oh well I quite like that sort of confetti look to it so I kept heating some of the blue again I sprinkled in some of the um, gorgeous star confetti and, and then because the embossing powder was warm when I sprinkled it in, it stuck to it. So I've actually got the confetti sort of stuck into the embossing powder. And also on this background, it shows you the translucency of the blue powder. Because wherever the blue has overlapped where the coral colour was, there is a hint of um, a purpley tone showing. I think it is the mica from the blue powder sort of picking up the background colour of the coral. And that's what's giving you that little bit of a purple. But I thought it was a really interesting effect. And then also in the background here, to get these splats, I literally just took a fine paintbrush some water and splattered it onto the background and then sprinkled the blue back on and then heat set it to get those little splats on there as well but I thought that was a really cool um, mixed media kind of background then to finish this card off I didn't want to stick this on yet because I wanted to show you the kind of full effect of the background but I just took one of these um, it's a die from tonic it came in like a large 5x7 frame and it had alternative uh, ovals that you could mix and match into them and I thought this happy birthday to you would work really nicely on there and I just stacked up four of them I die cut them out stacked up four from white and I thought that would work really nicely on the top of there but I left it off so that I could show you the background underneath but I can finish that card off now and I mean you could put it wherever you wanted on there but I feel like on top of that blue area there it really shows off that kind of die cut then the next card that I have done is using the sequins and the glitter behind the aperture there um, and you can see just how sparkly and how perfect the glitter and the sequins go together and this was using um, this heart is one of the folk floral sets from tonic I don't have them in the real packaging I've only got the sort of prototype packaging um, from when I did the sample some samples for the shows on Crate and Craft um, but I love these dies and I've used them on quite a few of the other um, project as well um, so I'll definitely make sure to link those below too on the tonic website but really really gorgeous heart this one and um, I've just used the same heart die to cut an aperture into the white and then I actually traced through that to get the area where I needed to put the glue and the sequins and the glitter and then I used this as an aperture raised it up over the top and then I've recessed back in I cut another one from the coral luster cardstock and I've just recessed that back on the top of it actually putting um, a couple of tiny bits of foam tape behind some of these solid areas so that it stood up um, in line with the actual aperture as well but the sequins and glitter are still behind there I really love that kind of a look for a card and this sort of die works perfectly for that and then the sentiment is a Lisa Horton sentiment which I've used the Flanders blue on the top and a couple of white die cuts um, underneath it so it kind of raises it up a little bit but that blue you can see how perfectly it tones in with the glitter and the sequins if you didn't have the cardstock though and you'd just gone for some of the nouveau elements you could definitely have used a double-sided adhesive sheet on this or just tap some glue on with your finger and um sprinkle the glitter on as well to tie this into that as well so um that's just a really simple card then this one is another way of using your washi tape so this is a really simple card again using that folk floral set this is like the accessory kind of set it had loads of extra little elements in it and as well as the heart you also get an extra heart die which is like a tiny little scalloped heart so I put I cut the scalloped heart from this little piece of cardstock that I had put strips of washi tape across and I've kept that heart and used it on another card but I have then um 
I made this piece big enough so that I could use it on another card as well. I wasn't just cutting the heart out, I was actually making it so that I could use the aperture too. And then to give this aperture kind of like a mat, I've then used the heart die that's actually this intricate one to cut a piece out of white and then I've placed this over the top and trimmed around the edge to give it a white border and then you also have the white heart in the centre. And then I've used some of the floral elements, these are sort of like foliage pieces and some of the hearts on there as well to finish that off. And I liked um, this patterned paper as the background. I mean, this technically is a little bit busy. I could have put vellum behind the heart to mute down the patterned paper and make these foliage pieces pop. But I, I don't mind it, actually. I think it looks all right. But if you did think it was too busy, a bit of vellum behind that heart would be perfect. It would sort that right out. Um, and mute the background down a little bit for you um, and then that's another Lisa Horton sentiment on there as well so really simple card again then this one is my usual sort of background of how I like to use a lot of um, the craft perfect whenever I'm doing like samples to show off a colour trend or um, for Jodie to make on the telly I always throw one of these cards in because you can use every single piece from a colour trend in the one project um, and show off all of the gorgeous cardstock and patterned paper and I really like doing this kind of card so and and actually now we have the wide roll of Craft Perfect tissue tape so there is actually a really wide roll of Craft Perfect tape so just like these rolls that you get you get the same amount on them but it's actually a really wide roll I've just ordered myself one but it hasn't come yet um, but you can actually get the wide rolls now which is exactly what I always use to cover a piece of cardstock to then put the strips on there um, so that's going to be perfect for doing all of these kind of backgrounds um, and this is just like another take on the tutorial card so this is more for if you have random scraps left over that are literally like tiny little slivers but they're really short and not long enough to do this kind of thing or random little squares that you've got left over. That's perfect for this kind of card but if you're just um, starting out uh, with all of your colour trend pieces and you've still got your full pieces of A4 or you've got pieces that are the full width of A4 left still, cut a few... Um, skinny little strips of them using your guillotine so that you've got all of the pieces to do this or if you're likely to have those skinny little strips left over after you finish crafting then you could just cut a few more and add to them to create this kind of a project so really gorgeous bright bold background and then I've just put the white sentiment on top which is another Lisa Horton one which I just um, stacked up with like two or three of them cut from white to make it a thicker sort of dimension on there this one was a very experimental card. Uh, it went through a very ugly phase, but I think I sort of rescued it. So the idea on this card was I wanted to cut these little uh, diamond pieces, which are again from that folk floral set of dies. They're from one of the frame sets. They had like small little dies right in the centre and there was a gorgeous little diamond with the flower cut out of it. And I really liked that design. So I cut a bunch of them. I cut them from the Flanders Blue, from the Pier View, from the Coral Luster and from the Italian Rose cardstocks. And the idea behind the card was I put um, a sheet of double sided adhesive down so again you could use that new wide roll but I actually used a craft perfect double sided sheet um, and covered my piece of card with it and then what I wanted was I wanted the coral die cuts to merge to blue and then I wanted to put the embossing powders in the background but do the coral where the blue was and the blue where the coral was so they sort of merged into each other swapping colours um, however when I did that um, it looked a little bit blotchy and you know not that great I think it's because the blue powder was translucent and compared to the blue die cuts um, it wasn't quite meshing that nicely and um, the coral worked really really nicely but the blue was a little bit too like translucent to sort of go with the cardstock so to try and sort of bring this together a little bit more and turn it into this I um I'd heat set all of the embossing that was on there and then obviously I couldn't put another layer of blue on top of it to intensify the blue because it would have, um, if I'd squished an ink pad over here to make it sticky again to be able to put the powder on there it would have covered all my die cuts up and if I tried to reheat the blue area it probably would have affected the double sided adhesive applying that much heat to it to try and make it um, hot again so that I could sprinkle more powder on so my um, sort of way to get around it and to try and save this 
card was I took my ink pad, squished it all over it and put some um, ultra thick clear embossing powder on it. So it's actually kind of encased all of these die cuts. That's why the peer view has gone so dark because it's gone a little bit uh, translucent with the absorption of the clear embossing powder. But it's kind of given it like a tiled sort of look. And then while that clear embossing powder was still wet, um, or still molten, I sprinkled in some of the glitter to the blue side and some of the confetti to the coral side and then sort of merged them in the middle as well. And I think it kind of rescued it. I mean, it is a little bit translucent still on the blue side, but get doing the ultra thick on there, it's give, given it like a dimpled look. Um, and I quite like the effect of that, actually. So this is kind of like... Um, more of like a happy accident kind of card. It didn't quite turn out how I wanted it to, but I do quite like how it turned out in the end. Um, but if you didn't want to mess around with embossing powders and you had um, a coral coloured glitter in your stash, you could have just done this with the blue glitter and then a coral coloured glitter coming up the other direction as well and it would have worked really nicely too. But I thought I'd keep this card in and actually try and finish it off into a card just to show you a different kind of idea for a background. So that one um, is that. Then this one is the Gorgeous Shimmer Powder as the background and then I've taken a stencil, this was a Francoise one, and I used my little um, Nouveau Clear Mark ink pad, pounced through the stencil and then added the Coral Embossing Powder and while the embossing powder was still molten I sprinkled in some of the confetti as well. So again a really simple card but you've got that dramatic effect of the shimmer powder in the background and the burst kind of effect of the stencil that I've used with the embossing powder in the centre. And then for the centre it's another Lisa Horton one and I've just done it um, from white and pearlescent cardstock and shadowed them in the centre. The next one is a leftover piece of a shimmer powder background that I, I don't know if I used the aperture from it somewhere else actually. I did. So this was the piece of shimmer powder cardstock. I'd done a shimmer powder background and I had put some cling film on it but it hadn't really um, given it enough detail just to be a background as it was so I cut a frame out of it and then used this tonic dye on there shadowed with the gorgeous Italian rose mirror card as my actual sort of main focal point. I put the beautiful glitter card behind and I kept this messy shimmer powder outside edge as my little aperture for this to go in and then I've just used a black pen and a little black uh, sentiment stamped on there. This is a Sizzix one um, and I've just laid that up like that but obviously I did didn't want to then waste the middle piece of that so I've used the middle piece on this card I've added some faux white stitching to the edge to tie in some of the white die cuts and the white card blank I've matted it onto a piece of the glitter card and then I've used a ton of those gorgeous folk floral elements to go across the card and give it a different kind of um, scattered sort of effect so it's very bold on the top with the blue colors and then sort of um, more tone on tone with the two coral colours in the background but this is the gorgeous coral effect that you can get from the shimmer powder and that kind of patterning that's on there is from the cling film that I put on there while it was drying as well so there's that card then and there's also that one as well then these two cards are the sort of focal elements. We'll, we'll look at the focal elements first. I'll come back to the background on this one but the focal elements on these two are some gorgeous lawn fawn strawberries I just love Lawn Fawn dyes and these strawberries are so pretty but actually um, Tonic have just come out with some strawberry dyes as well um, I had already made these cards before I even got those other dyes so um, you could definitely use some Tonic dyes on this as well if you'd rather but I really love these um, strawberries very similar to the lemons that I used in the uh, spring meadow colour trend video. I really love those as well and I thought the strawberries would go perfectly for this colour trend. Um, even though the stalks and the leaves and stuff are blue rather than green I think it works really nicely but on these ones I was experimenting with on the blue elements here I think, do I do it on the yeah, I did it on all of them. So on all of the navy blue elements, I was experimenting with cutting them from the navy blue, peer blue cardstock. 
then I patted on some glacier paste onto them and then on the leaves, so all of the leaves in the background, where that glacier paste was wet, I sprinkled on some of the embossing powder and heated it. So you've actually got glacier paste and embossing powder on these leaves. Then on the leaves for the strawberries, it's glacier paste with a little bit of glitter sprinkled in. So the blue glitter, I've then sprinkled that on top of the wet glacier paste. And then the strawberries, they've got the pearlescent card behind them and then I just used some of uh, some red textured craft perfect from my stash I think it was a, a deeper red color like um, I think it was brick red and then on these ones I put the coral colored embossing powder onto there and this is where I noticed this was the first time I'd heated this and I noticed the white that was sort of coming through so I kept on heating it to give a little bit extra of this white kind of effect because I really liked how it was looking so that's how I did the elements on that one and then these were the same process as well, glacier paste and glitter on the blue bits and then just the uh, gorgeous coral embossing powder on the main body of the strawberry and you can see a little bit of that white kind of happening there as well. So if you wanted to um, intensify that white kind of effect I think keeping the powder molten and sprinkling a little bit more of the coral powder on um, I think it's when it has a thicker layer the white can kind of bubble to the top um, and give you that kind of effect but this one I finished off really simply just with a piece of the gorgeous patterned paper a ripped piece of the thick uh, vintage white vellum from Tonic um, some white stitching and then also a little sentiment from Sizzix as well to finish that off and then this one I will come back to the background because I this was like a probably like a third or fourth iteration of mopping up background and I was uh, experimenting with a textured slightly off-white cardstock so I'll come back to explain that one um, this one, you can tell I've got a load of samples here. This, this is taking forever to get through them but hopefully it's inspiring to you um, but this one was playing with the new ink pads and embossing powders and using some of the old stamp clubs this is one of the um the ones with all of those textured kind of patterns in there and i've done some of the stripey patterns some of the zigzag patterns the dotty patterns the script using the different colors of inks and then these two coffee rings on here are with the gorgeous blue um pearlescent embossing powder and again you can see that translucency of the powder and the way putting it over the coral stamping makes the mica in the blue powder give a purple kind of reflection to it as well so really really pretty and then these are three little Lisa Horton butterflies that I have used the mousse on top of and also the dream drop as well so the mousse and the dream drop on top of the butterflies and then I finished it off with a little Sizzix sentiment as well then oh this one is the waist or the interior piece from the frame here so this has got the washi tape on so it's got strips of washi tape and then it's die cut into a heart shape so it's another different way of using your washi tapes I then put the white die cut on the top which is actually the white die cut that came out of the white frame that I put behind this frame as well so the waist pieces from this one we used to make this one which is nice um, and then the background I just kept it really simple and cut a load more of those gorgeous elements from the folk floral set where this heart is from just to give it a little bit of um, a faux embossing folder kind of a look to the background and then I finished it off with a Sizzix stamped sentiment again so that is that one then this one is um, the shimmer powders again so a lovely shimmer powder background again with that lovely speckled kind of effect and then I've die cut these flowers again from that folk floral set you can tell I like that one I've used it a lot um, there's this gorgeous flower and then there's also this like little ring that has a circle that pops out of the middle as well and I've used the coral luster Italian rose and sugared coral cardstocks to cut all the bits and pieces out and you can see how perfectly this shimmer powder has got all of the colours that match all of those different corally and almost orangey kind of card stocks in there as well. It's got all of those colours in, so the glitter card stock goes really nicely with this. And I thought just an overall pattern would show how you can just add your die cuts on top of a new version of background, especially if you don't like it that much. If you've done a background and you feel like it's not really what you were going for but you don't really know how to sort of rescue it try adding a load of die cuts over the top of it if you've gone really heavy with your colour try adding white die cuts so they pop out from it or if you've gone a little bit lighter um, 
multi-tonal colours of die cuts work really nicely over the top of it as well and it's almost like a tone on tone background but you've got that variation with some of the white areas left in there as well um, and then these are some Lisa Horton stickers that I've used as a sentiment on there too then this is another way of using your washi tape so this is again just taking little strips of this I think I did this for the uh, Christmas magic colour trend video actually just little strips of washi tape just to create a whole block kind of background and then I had cut tons of all of these little elements so I had lots of little hearts left over so I put blue hearts over the top of pink washi tape and pink hearts over the top of blue washi tape and then I've used three stickers from that Lisa Horton set um, and just put those on on there so it says thank you thank you thank you in kind of a repetition to go with that repeating background and repeating hearts and stuff on there so that's a really quick and simple one another really quick and simple one just showing off a load of the different card stocks as well maybe you like to combine all of the card stock onto one card but you don't like the um, strip kind of idea you maybe you don't like the wonky scraps idea or you don't like having so much on your card stock maybe you want to go with more of that white space um, having little die cuts like this works really nicely to tie all of those cards uh, all of those colors into one card as well and all the different finishes of the card stock too and I I've done a couple more stickers on that to keep smiling it's your birthday then I think this could be the final card I think it's the final card to show you and then there's just backgrounds left over but this one was mixing the mousse and the glacier paste and I think a little bit of the nouveau drops as well because we had the glitter nouveau drops and I literally just took my cardstock and went like this so you know um, how I showed you in my tutorial video for the um, nouveau squish background using tonic craft kit 61 where I had mixed together the nouveau uh, drops of the ivory seashell and also the new colour of the mica mist this is the same kind of idea of mixing a few Nouveau products together and then just smushing your card into it but instead of going squish into it I had it at an angle and kind of dragged it across so only half of it was kind of covered and then once it was dry I die cut a rectangle out of the centre and turned it round so it gives a different kind of look I really like the kind of effect that you get because you get these really natural organic kind of edges um, that kind of pop out in different places. I really like that kind of look. A little bit of splatting would have looked nice on here as well. I know not everybody likes splatting so I tried to not do splatting on everything even though it's one of my favourite techniques but I really like this one too. Um, and again a Sizzix little sentiment there and this is one of Lisa Horton's um, embossing folder and die cutting sort of butterflies and again I really liked the little piece that I showed you earlier on where I had embossed the Flanders blue cardstock and then used the glacier paste over the top so I did the same for this one and then it also ties that um, glacier paste kind of element into the background and actually thinking of it now I think I sprinkled some glitter into this too before I did the swoosh through it so unless it is just the glitter from the Nouveau drops. I'm not sure, I could have sprinkled glitter into that as well. I made this like a month ago now, so uh, my memory is a little bit spotty, but yeah, I think that's kind of how I did that sort of a background idea, but I really love this kind of effect. And this is a great way of using up what's left on your easy clean mat when you've been doing backgrounds as well if you've got a load left but you really don't want to do more of the sort of squish or twist kind of backgrounds just squishing it up one side works really nicely so that's that one then I've done a couple more ideas just using your washi tape so um this is kind of showing off a lot of the translucency of the washi tapes as well so this is literally just doing diagonal stripes so it's a kind of a similar sort of effect to um using horizontal stripes that you then die cut out of but these ones I overlapped so this is just butting them right up against each other so you have the strips of each of the kind of washi tapes but you can also overlap them as well so this gives some of the checked design a darker finish because it's over the top of the navy blue or it gives um, a part of the coral tape a darker finish because it's over the top of the navy blue or you know you add some coral into the check design as well so it's just another different way of um, doing this idea you could definitely recreate this card onto this sort of a background so just bringing in some white die cuts and adding them over the top and they'll really pop out from the colours or you could add in a focal element uh, maybe cut from one of the different card stocks maybe do the actual heart from white and then cut this die from this bit underneath perhaps or from one of the other specialty card stocks and then I also did a kind of almost like a plaid version 
I know this kind of thing isn't to everybody's taste, it can look a little bit messy, especially with the overlapping and you kind of get not not a muddy colour, but it's not really a, a descript colour underneath there. It's not like you get a purple because they're layered over the top of each other or something. It is um, more of like a muted kind of coral tone or something. But I thought I'd give it to you as another idea of how you might want to use some bits and pieces. And you can definitely disguise some of those darker areas by just bringing in some white die cuts and adding them over the top. Or bringing in um, darker coloured die cuts as well and just adding different bits and pieces over the top of that. I mean they might be a bit too busy for that you might want to go for something um, like maybe a circle to completely cover that central section and then have your sentiment in the circle and you just see all of these beautiful bits coming off the side rather than the big overlap area in the center you could just mask that off with a circle and have your sentiment on the top of it so that's just a couple of other washi tape ideas then I still have all of these ideas to show you um, just using a few different like backgrounds here. So these were the leftover ones that I then used this background from. So this was one of my Nouveau Squish backgrounds but this was using the mousse, the sparkle spray and the glacier paste. The coral mousse, the sparkle spray and the glacier paste and look how gorgeous that looks. It's like um a sky from like a famous painting I can't think what the painting is but that kind of bringing in coral and blue into like a cloudy sky to give that sort of um, sunset or sunrise kind of finish to it it really looks like that to me I feel like um, maybe a silhouette in the foreground would look really cool maybe like a building silhouette or something like that would really finish off that card nicely but that was literally just putting all of those bits and pieces onto the easy clean mat and squishing my cardstock into it and then I got this beautiful effect then I took some textured cardstock and squished it in. This was... I'm not actually sure what kind of cardstock this is. It was just from my scrap, so it could actually be the Nouveau watercolour cardstock, actually, because it's a slightly off-white colour. Um, but again, when you use a textured cardstock, you get a different kind of effect when you squish it into it. So this has got um, more concentrated areas of the mousse with little splattier areas where I'd used up some of the colour before. And then also, going on to another piece of cardstock, I've got this background as well, which actually... I think I might have squished an A5 piece into there because that looks like it matches. So an A5 piece of cardstock and then I've cut half of it off to create the background for this card. And adding in those Nouveau drops in the background just sort of ties those coral colours together. So that's sort of like another squishing technique. Then, oh this one, this is, uh, this must have been the original reason. So I was doing a squishy background and can I tell now exactly what I used in there? I'm pretty sure I sprinkled some glitter in as well. So it's the blue Nouveau mousse, the glacier paste, the blue glitter drop and some of the blue glitter all on there. This was the first background, squishing it into there and pulling the background off. Then this was onto the pure blue cardstock on the smooth side, plus I've done something else to it. And then this was the leftovers, using up the leftovers to get this squish kind of a background. But what I did on this one is, whilst that was all wet, I sprinkled in some of the embossing powder and then I've just heat set it on top of it. So you can actually use the um, wet properties of a nouveau squishing kind of background and add to it as well with some heat embossing whether it is sprinkled on when it's wet or whether you leave it to dry and then heat emboss over the top of it for example um this was the first squishy background so this is working onto the easy clean mat again i cleaned it all off and this was using the um nouveau shimmer powder this is where the Nouveau Shimmer Powder mess came from when I was showing you the Nouveau tutorial for this. If you've already watched that, you'll know what I mean, or if you watch that later, you'll know what I mean. Um, but So this was working onto the Easy Clean Matte, spraying the, the matte with water, tapping in some of the Nouveau Shimmer Powder, and then this was just doing like the wrinkle-free distress kind of technique, but with the Shimmer Powder. And you can see here, I actually like twisted it a little bit, so I probably went like this um, to get a little bit of movement in there. Then you dry it a little bit, bit and tip it back in and you can dry it and, and tap it back in as many times as you want to and it'll kind of build up this spotty kind of effect or intensify the shimmer in some areas as well so that's that background then this was using up um 
what was left after that background um, and I presume the one that I had done the um, cling film um, idea on was probably using up a little bit of it as well but this one is kind of got all over colour there's not so much of the uh, you know individual colours from the shimmer powder left in it so I wanted to make it look more interesting so I took my Nouveau spoon and you can use whichever end you feel more comfortable using and then you can load it up with some of the coral powder and then if you just tap like this you can get it into I mean it's not it's not extremely controlled because kind of powder just wants to do whatever it wants to do really but you can go like this and kind of try and get that sort of veining effect um, to give a different kind of look to a background again as well so you can just take a wet squished background and sprinkle randomly onto it and heat it to get this kind of look with your embossing powders or you can be more controlled with where you place your embossing powders using your Nouveau spoon or you can wait until the background has dried and then stamp with clear mark and do your embossing over the top as well. So there's so many different ways of like adding to some one of these squish kind of backgrounds. And then once you've done all that squishing, if you still have some left on there that you don't want to waste, take a paintbrush and just do a stripey background. This is one of the Nouveau paintbrushes. Um, it's a three eighths of an inch wide flat brush and you can just load it up with the colour and paint it across and depending how much colour is left, how much water you've put in there, you'll get different kind of effects as you drag this across. You can do this with your Nouveau mousses as well and Glacier Paste too and your sparkle spray as well. You don't have to just use the shimmer powder, you can do whatever you want to uh, for this kind of a background. But that's just another way of using um, leftover bits and pieces from all of your projects. So this has been a very long unboxing video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, sorry that it has turned out to be so long. I, I really didn't realise how many backgrounds and stuff that I had made until I was kind of finishing all the cards. Um, but I still didn't even finish all of them. So it's a really fun colour trend to play with this one. And whether you pick all of the elements to play with or whether you just add a few more to your stash you probably already have some elements of the Nouveau items from this trend maybe in different colours that you could just combine with a couple of the new products to kind of give um, a different sort of effect than what you've been getting before as well um, and don't forget if you like the tutorial style videos that I've started doing there are two tutorials that will be up on my channel um, a few days following this video but if you want to watch them before I actually post them live you'll be able to find them on Tonic's uh, website as well where the colour trend is linked and they'll probably be sharing them too but this one is the tutorial using the Nouveau products which is using three of the new drops and the confetti and then this is the tutorial using the Craft Perfect products just all of the patterned papers and cardstock but either of these two tutorials don't require you to have the colour trend if you have any Nouveau drops in your stash or confetti or any cardstock of different um, sort of finishes and patterns and stuff you can definitely have a go at making either of these cards and you definitely don't have to use the same sentiments that I've used on them either but they're just a nice sort of tutorial of just another way of how to create a background using scraps of cardstock or your Nouveau products as well. So I really hope you've enjoyed this unboxing video for Tonic's Coral Skies Colour Trend, which is their third colour trend of 2022. Um, and I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch this video because I know it's probably a really, really long one. But I know there are a lot of you out there who really enjoy these videos. So to those of you who really enjoy them, thank you so much for watching and I hope you... Um, um, got a little bit of inspiration from it and enjoyed some of the samples that I showed you as well. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Bye!